on, somebody. Give it up. Praise the Lord. Amen. How many loves Jesus this morning? Oh, I feel like I'm in the right place. Amen. Hallelujah. You can be seated. Y'all look, y'all look real good. Amen. I feel like I'm at home. Amen. What a beautiful place. Beautiful day. Split button. And uh, I'm so glad to be here. My beautiful children, Ethan and Haley, they have grown up. And I don't hard for me to call them kids anymore. As long as they keep taking out the trash and feeding the dog. Amen. Amen. They're doing great. And uh, wish uh, my better half. Check, check. Uh oh. Don't cut me out when I say her name now. Brooke. In the, and uh, she's, uh, she's my best friend. Love her. And uh, she would be with me, but little Easton couldn't make it with his schedule. And his dad, was, he decided to hang out on the beach a little bit. And uh, she got to get him yesterday, but uh, she sends her love. And our family is doing amazing. And I just want you to know, we appreciate your love and your grace and your prayers for us. Truly, God is a restoring God. Amen. You're looking at somebody uh, that's lost it, but then God gave it all back. And if I ever felt like Job at times, I probably could testify a little bit, just like many of you. But aren't you glad you serve a Savior, a King that still rules and reigns, and He's in complete and total control? And no matter what, you can trust Him when He's driving the ship. Amen? So I want Ethan and Haley to come up. They're going to sing an awesome song for you. Uh, make them welcome. Haley's 14. Ethan will be graduating this next year. Praise God. 2022. He is 18, and uh, he's still single. I told him he's got to stay single till he graduates because it's cheaper because he don't have a job. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I just tease him. Anyway, they love the Lord. They have a passion for, for God's presence, and we worship all the time together. And I just want them to have the, just do what y'all do. Love y'all. Good morning. So good to be home. I have a thought I would be all the way in Cincinnati, Ohio, but I mean, God knows what he's doing at the end of the day. And uh, so me and Haley, uh, we have a song called Champion, and I would like to share it with y'all this morning, and uh, y'all worship freely, however you please. So here you go.
Praise the Lord. How many believe he's conquered it all in this place? Come on, just lift your hands all across this sanctuary. Love on him. We're in a season of thanksgiving. His presence is a sweet, sweet aroma. When you don't have anything else, if you can call on his name, the Bible says he will show up and he will fight your battles. See, those kids, they know that Nobody else has ever been a champion like their Savior. They know that when they call on his name, he will show up. He will fight every battle. He will stand between every obstacle. You are my champion. Giants fall down when we stand. You stand undefeated. Every battle you've won, I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence. I'm seated with the one who has conquered it all. 
Come on, you got to stop seeing yourself defeated. You got to see yourself standing as a champion. Come on. You are my champion. Giants. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you won. I am who you say I am. You crown. You crown me with confidence. I am seated with the one who has conquered it all. Nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody Woo. like you, Lord. There's no one like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. No other place I'd rather be. Cause here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say. That you are my God. You all together worthy. You love you, Jesus. All together lovely. So worthy, Lord. <laughs> all together wonderful to me. Come on, you tell him. Here I am. You come to say something? You're say, you're my God. You're all together lovely. You're all together worthy. Lord, you're all together wonderful. Wonderful to me. Here I am to worship. Lord, here I am. I've come to bow down. Come to say. He's worthy in this place. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful to me. And I'll never know how much it costs <laughs> just to see my filthy sins upon that cross. I'll never know how much it costs. Come on. Just to see my sins on an old rugged, on an old rugged cross. I'll never know, know how much it costs. Oh, just to see my sins on an old rugged. Come on, tell somebody. You'll never Upon that cross. Father, we love you in this place. God, we ask you to have your way. Transform us and change us by your word. Shift the atmosphere, God. Lift every burden. Destroy every yoke. Thank you for the anointing that's in this house. Fall afresh on us. We submit ourselves to you, Holy Spirit. We ask you to have your way in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody agree with that shout, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Give him another hand clap of praise. Let him know you love him. Amen. Whew. 
Thank you, Shay. How many love Sister Shay in the house? She stepped up last minute. <laughs> Woo. All right. Let's get in the word. Huh? How many loves the word? You still love the word around here? Texas folk love the word. All right. I'm going to read five verses for you. First Samuel chapter eight. And then we're going to jump to chapter 16. First Samuel chapter eight. Got my nephew in the house, little Trent. He ain't young no more. He's got himself a little baby right there. Little Jovi. I hadn't got to kiss her yet, but I'm going to. And got Kayla in the house. There is children's church. They said if you want to be dismissed, all the kiddos. And uh, again, as you're finding your place, 1 Samuel chapter 8. I'll say once again how privileged I am to get to come and just worship with you and share the, what I believe the Lord shared has given for me, to me, for you guys. I believe we and I love, I love my dad, I love my mom. How many appreciate your pastors, say amen. I love them. How many appreciate Pastor Calvin in the house, his family. I love you, Calvin. I know uh, I'm thankful that what the enemy means for bad, God knows how to turn it to good. Amen. Calvin, you're a rock star, buddy, on them preaching. And the devil thought he had a chance. He should have took your drum playing. <laughs> beat him over the head with those sticks <laughs> amen but blessings over your family my friend and uh, so all right well first samuel chapter 8 verse 4 simply says this then all the elders of israel gathered together and came to samuel at ramah okay samuel was the prophet he had been he had been uh, and or the priest okay he's he's the pastor all the Elders came to him with a complaint. How many's ever heard there's a complaint at church? <laughs> Ain't no complaints like at church. And said unto him, Look, you're old, buddy. <laughs> don't y'all come tell me that now. They said, You're old, and your sons, they don't even walk in your ways. Now make us a king to judge us. Look at look at it now. Like all the other nations. Give us what everybody else has got. We don't want the old anymore. Verse 6. But the thing displeased Samuel. That's how you know his heart was right. It hurt him. When they said, give us a king. See, he understood there was only one king. He understood his focus and his mission, his passion was to simply tell the truth of who the king was. He was speaking on behalf of the king and they didn't like it. He's, so it hurt him. So Samuel prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said, listen to what the Lord said to Samuel. Heed the voice of the people and all that they say to you, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me, that I should not see that. He said, they don't want me to reign over them. Kind of sounds like 21st century, don't it? Mm-hmm. And then if you'll flip to chapter 18, uh, 16, 1 Samuel chapter 16. Just one verse for you. And you, can, you just sit right on down. 16 verse 1 says this. Now the Lord said to Samuel. I love it that God keeps talking to him. God will always talk to you. He said, how long will you mourn for Saul? Everybody say Saul. All right. He said, I have rejected him from reigning over Israel. And I like this, this instruction. Fill your horn with oil. Everybody say, fill your horn. Fill your horn with yourself. Is that what he says? Fill your horn with religion. Is that what he said? Going to church. No. He said, fill your horn with oil. Somebody say, Holy Spirit. Okay. And I like this little word. Go. He said, fill your horn with oil and go. I am sending you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite. Now, don't miss this. For I, God, have provided myself a king among his sons. Today, I want to preach to you and or speak to you just simple, from my heart, but from a subject simply anointed for purpose. 
anointed for purpose. How many knows you got a purpose for being anointed? Yeah, all right. Father, thank you for your word. Do what only you can do. And you change us. You shift us, transition us for your glory. Fresh anointing fall in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you can be seated. God bless you. Thank you again. I love Samuel. Yeah, give God praise for the word. I love Samuel. I love his heart. If you read his books, you'll see Samuel wasn't a quitter. He, 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 he took a licking and he kept on ticking. He was just the kind of guy that would push through adversity and circumstance and rejection. He lived a life of rejection. If you look at his life, you're going to see that Samuel, he'd been, he'd been committed to the ministry. He'd been faithful to the call. Uh, the Lord had placed an anointing on his life of influence. Somebody say influence. Because see, you can't be anointed and not have influence. Uh, it's, that's the difference. Uh, we, there's a lot of people who want to be looked at and put on pedestals based off of, um, I don't know, uh, giftings. But, but gifts can only take you so far. The anointing will take you up when everybody else has tried to pull you down or when circumstances is tried. It is only the anointing. It gifts. I never said, it never says in the scripture that the gifts, uh, it does say the gifts will make room for you. So don't, don't get me wrong. Uh, God gave you a gift of finance. He gave you a gift of singing. He maybe gave you a gift of, 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 uh, of being a businessman or uh, maybe gave you a gift, gift of communication. So those are gifts, okay? It makes room for you. But you must never forget without the anointing, there's no lifting of burdens and destroying yokes. See, see, a lot of times, a lot, a lot of people, they love to uh, get discovered, but nobody wants to go through development. We, we, we love to be in the spotlight, but nobody wants to go to the dark room to be uh, developed in the right way so that when it's time to be uh, put on a platform or in a place of influence, you can actually stand when everybody else is hating on you or pointing at you or circumstances and storms come knocking at your door. That's why we got a lot of preachers out there who have been, they've been preaching one thing and living another. I'm sick of preachers preaching in pulpits on Sunday and then sleeping with other people's wives on Monday. Come on. I'm sick of seeing people fail and fall because they didn't take the time to go through the process of development, but they were real quick to run through the process of being discovered. Samuel wasn't interested in being discovered so much as he was pleasing his father and walking through the development of hearing his voice. Nor, notice when, when God spoke, Samuel could hear. There's a lot of people that are, God's speaking, but we can't hear his voice. Because we haven't spent the time in the development stages, in the place, in the position of humility to say, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. We got our wills. Everybody's got a will, but nobody's got his will. And, and, and we can get ourselves, let me say it like this, we can get ourselves in trouble. How many can, in, can testify you've gotten in trouble more than once? I got both hands. Because you did what you wanted. Okay, so we're just talking about Samuel here. So Samuel, his whole, look at the history. His sons rejected the anointing. Bible says they were hoodling and hoppling all, sleeping around and doing all kinds. They, they had even become the leaders of the church. I mean, that was messing, just, just getting all kinds. See, the devil doesn't care. You could be sitting by the biggest devil of them all right here in church. It don't matter. Look at don't, don't look to your left or right. Don't, just just don't, even, don't even look at them. <laughs> you never know who you're sitting by. But here's the, the enemy comes, the Bible says he comes as a sheep's in wolf's clothing. Is that right? Or wolf in sheep's clothing. Let me say it like that. I, I got it mixed up. He comes like a wolf in sheep's clothing. So he looks the part, talks the part, acts the part, but he ain't the part. And it's very important that we recognize the difference between the authentic anointing and a fake and phony, uh, uh, I don't know, paint it up, dress it up, feel good. It's not an emotional. We are emotional people. And if you're not careful, you will be driven by your emotions rather than being led by the Spirit. The Bible says they that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Do I have any sons and daughters in this house? Yeah. So you have to be led by his Spirit. So I just want to break it down for you real simply. Samuel was led by the Spirit of God. He depended on the anointing. And if there's something you, don't, you leave here with today, I want you to recognize you must have the anointing, the anointing in your life moving. 
shifting, speaking. Somebody says, how do I do that? Listen for his voice. He does speak. Jesus is the anointed one. And if you've accepted Christ as your personal savior through confession of your sins, my, I believe that, that the anointed one dwells in you and the same power that rose Jesus from the dead lives inside of you. You have that power and you have that authority, but you've got to recognize whose you are. You don't belong to yourself. I know you've been told this, but it's important today in the 21st century you recognize it's not by might. It's not by power. It's by the Spirit. It's the anointing of the Spirit that's going to cause you to get up in the morning and, 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 and recognize greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. It's the anointing of the Spirit that's going to give you the ability to cast out demons and lay hands on the sick and speak life in the dead situation. Listen, it ain't going to get any better. That made you feel good, didn't it? It ain't going to get any better. But for the Christian, we can have confidence and know that he who the Son has set free is free indeed. And what the enemy's meant for bad, God knows how to turn and forget. And I love it when he tells us over in Hebrews chapter 8, all things work together for the good to those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. That takes all the pressure off when you know all things are working for your good. Somebody shout amen. So Samuel, he's been rejected by his sons. Now he's rejected by Israel because they don't want him. They don't want the anointing he carries. They don't want him speaking on their behalf anymore. They say, give us a king. Give us like what everybody else has got. We want to look like everybody. We want to fit in. I mean, that sounds familiar, don't it? We want to keep up with the Joneses. Mm -hmm. Now, it looked as if he had a young man by the name of Saul who was a great leader. He was head and shoulders. He looked the part. He was good looking. He had a mighty voice. He had influence. He had been anointed and he was carrying that anointing. But something caused him to lose track. Yeah. Something caused him to lose focus of his purpose of being anointed. And I'm here to talk to people today about it's not the fact that you're not anointed. It's the fact of recognizing you got a purpose for the anointing. The only people who will make it in this life and live a life of anointing on a consistent basis are people who are not afraid to go through a little crushing, to go through a little rejection, to go through a little laughter, a little pointing of the, of the finger. It's okay if they don't like your post on Facebook. That's not crushing, but let's, it's okay. in today's society, we, well, they didn't like my post. I ain't talking to them for a month. Again, you can't be led by emotions. We, we must be a people who are led by the Spirit because when everything else is going chaotic, it is the Spirit that will hone us in and will, will speak in the midst of the storm. And it may just be a still, small voice, but it is that still, small voice that will change our direction and or give us peace in the midst of whatever it is that we're facing. So no matter what doctor's report you get, no matter what, what lawyer sends you a letter, doesn't matter what you're facing at home or on the job, where you're at financially, you have an anointing and it has a purpose. And if you know that, suddenly you don't have to walk around with fear. You don't have to walk around wondering what's, what's my calling. Your calling is to walk in your anointing and be led by the Spirit. Okay? Now, so here's Samuel, get the picture, he's, he's, he's rejected, he's weeping, all he's doing, so, so they tell him that he's old in chapter 8, and they don't want his ways, and, uh, and now he's in chapter 16, things had been going good, 14, 15, and, and now Saul has jacked things up because he's got caught up in himself. And, and, and he's, he, he wants the power, he wants the, the, the spotlight, and, 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 and now pride has entered in, and, and, and I want you to see, so it's breaking the heart of Saul. It's very important that we, we protect the anointing in our lives. How do you protect the anointing? By go to ch going to church more? No. What are you going to, you've already seen, they closed the doors. Pretty much, they tried to shut the doors. Did you still carry an anointing? For some, there's many pastors even, that they, they lose their voice if they ain't got this microphone. They got this platform because their anointing has been based off of exposure to man.
instead of humility to God. And there's something that God doesn't take lightly. I believe that he's, he's looking for men and women, boys and girls, who will stay focused on the true purpose that they've been called for. The anointing has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with him. It doesn't come without a cost. You, there is a sacrifice. There is a denial. There is a walking away from. Yes, there is. But listen, there's nothing that you do that gives you the ability to earn what he did. I'm going to say it again. There's nothing that you do that will ever give you the ability to earn to, 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 what he did. He did it. He paid the price. He died on the cross. He got his own self up on the third day. Not because of any other reason except for the fact he loved you. And he loved me. He didn't say, clean yourself up, I'll die for you. He didn't say, get this Ten Commandments right, I'll die for you. He didn't say, do X, Y, Z right. No, no. He said, all that will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will. Somebody say, he will. He will give you rest. I love how he says, take my yoke upon you. As if to say, cast off what you got and take what I got. Take my yoke upon you, for my burden is easy. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. That's what he said. It's light. Life's hard and the struggles, but the anointing can take you through. So fast forward now. So he's in chapter 16. He's weeping, and God tells him three things. First of all, he says, stop crying. I want you to quit crying. I want you to quit mourning. I want you to quit being depressed. Stop acting like you can't eat. Go eat a bag of bonbons and a, a coke come on some of you've been mourning and crying over things of your past long enough and i just come here from cincinnati to tell you god said stop crying he said stop weeping there's a season to weep but weeping's endure for the night it's time to have joy unspeakable and full of glory somebody say stop crying so number one if you like to take notes i'd tell you this stop crying over what god is finished with he said i've rejected him I'm done with Saul. That's why we got to walk a fine line. Now, this is Old Testament. This is looking towards the cross. We look back towards the cross because that's what happened. Jesus already paid for everything, conquered it all. He's the one who has conquered it all. We sing it, but we forget it. And sometimes we believe it for other people, but we don't believe it for us. But you don't know what I did. Who cares what you did? What about what he's done? He's finished it. He's conquered it. He, 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 he uh, overcame it for you. Sickness, disease, temptation, struggle, addiction, all of it. He paid it. How many believes it in this house? And, and you can have a different mindset when you recognize who's in you. The anointing lives inside of you. It worked so well for Elisha. He was so anointed. You remember Elisha the prophet? He, he was so anointed. He had died. They threw him in a tomb. They rolled the stone over. And one day this other dead guy, some friends brought, came passing his grave. And they, and they opened it up and they threw him inside there. And Elisha's anointing was so powerful. As soon as the dead guy touched Elisha's bones, the Bible says he got up and he leaped. What was dead came alive again. The anointing can cause what's dead in your life to come alive again. It was Elizabeth who had, who had, uh, had a baby, what was it, for like six months or so, and Elizabeth hadn't felt that baby, and it seemed to be dead. But when so the anointed one, Mary, showed up, Jesus was inside that womb, and when she answered the door after a knock, the Bible says John the Baptist leaped inside of her. What was dead came alive. I'm just here to tell you the anointing can cause what's been dead. It can cause a broken marriage to come alive again. It can cause a financial burden to come alive again. I'm just here to encourage you to let you know the anointing still works. It still works. It can bring home an old hard hearted son or daughter who's running from the call on their life. It's your job to love them and let your anointing draw them through, through grace, not through condemnation, through mercy, not to preach at them 12 hours a day. It's not my job to preach to my kids. I've raised them up in the way that they should go. It's my job to love them and then let the Holy Spirit lead them. I refuse to do what the Holy Spirit knows already how to do. Come on, somebody. Mamas, you need to stop. You need to let go. Some of you mamas need to let go and let her do what she's going to do. 
She might need to get in trouble. He might need to get in trouble. But you got to stop mourning and you got to start recognizing the anointing will lead. The anointing will flow. Don't cause, don't cause more bitterness. Don't cause more rejection. See, Samuel could have dug his feet in the sand and said, I'm going to make this happen. Ah. God said, give the people what they want. Now they got what they want. And God said, now I'm going to step in. There does come a season where God will step in and you ain't got to do one thing. Okay, you're anointed for purpose. Somebody say, I'm anointed for purpose. All right. Many times we have, have to learn that no matter how it looks, once God's word is on it, it's done. Okay? You remember that scripture where Jesus looked at the, him and the disciples were walking past the fig tree? Jesus got hungry. That's how I know Jesus was full of the Holy Ghost. He liked to eat. Come on, somebody. He walked by that fig tree. The fig tree didn't have what he wanted. It wasn't producing in the season it should have been producing. So he spoke to it. He said, you're cursed. And he just kept on walking. Now get this. He spoke to it. It was dead the moment the word spoke to it. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God in the word. Jesus was the word. He is the word. And when he spoke the word, what he said for it to be, it was. It was dead. Though it looked the part, it acted the part, it was still standing. It was still flourishing, it seemed, but it had been cursed at the root. And what I'm telling you is, when God says to move, he says move. When God says it's dead, it's dead. You can't keep trying to hold on to something. When the word's been put on it, you've got to recognize it's a new day. It's a new day. It's a fresh time. It's a new season. And the anointing, the Bible says, a few days later, that Jesus passed by and the disciples. Look it up. Mark chapter 11, verse 20. The next morning they passed by in the fig tree. He had cursed. The disciples noticed it had withered from the roots. Now, their shocking experience was that it worked. How many times have we been shocked that God's word works? Now, is that the way it should be? No, no. When you know you're anointed, you can say, I am the head and I'm not the tail. I'm first and I'm not last. I'm above only and not beneath. You, it's not cockiness. It's, it's, a, it's a position of understanding who you are in Christ. It's a confidence in whose you are. It's a recognizing that no matter what the enemy throws your way, you can speak to the mountain and say, be ye removed. There's nothing impossible to them that believe. Say that with me. Say there's nothing impossible to them that believe. You got to believe it. And you got to walk in it. You got to speak it. You can't keep walking in fear, doubt, and unbelief and expect the anointing to work like it should. Stop weeping over what God has rejected. Mm. Number two, he said in our text, now the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning? All right. In that same verse, after he says, stop crying, he says, I want you to take your horn, which carried the anointing, listen, which represented power. He said, I want you to take your horn and I want you to go fill it up one more time. Fill it up with what? Yourself? This is what we do. A lot of times, this is our life. We'll fill ourselves up. fill ourselves up with Facebook, Instagram, TV. We fill ourselves up with working. If I can just get more money, if I can just make more friends, if I can just sound better, look better, if I could just tuck it, cut it, mud it, come on. If I could pump it up, I got to lift more weights. I got to shoot more Botox, come on. And we're getting filled with self. And before you know it, self's looking real good, ain't it? <laughs> the problem with self, self, self can't stand when storms come. Self will eventually get away. Self can only take you so far. Because uh -huh. eventually, you're going to 
important that you recognize before you get in the storm, before you go through the trial, before you get in a place of temptation, before you get in a place of weakness, you recognize self can't take you through the storm or the fire. You've got to be filled with the fresh anointing that God's called you to be filled with. Listen, on a seven day a week process, not just Sunday morning. These doors can be shut tomorrow. Do you got any Holy Spirit in you at home? Does your kids know what the Holy Spirit is at school and at home and at the grocery store? Do they know what it's like to hear mom and dad start weeping and crying and just worshiping in the car while they're driving to school? Just for nothing. Not because you need something, but because of who he is. See, when, you, when you're filling yourself up with the right thing, then what happens is, see, I, I put some oil in this. I put some... It's really water. But because of what I put on the inside, the fire can be applied. Because of what's on the inside. It can handle the fire from the outside. My point is, some of you haven't been standing when the fire has been applied to your life and it's not because you're not good enough. He's made you good enough. You got to recognize it's not about you. It's about the anointing he's trying to fill you with so that you can fulfill the purpose and the call upon your life. When every day that you get up, he's called you by name. He knows who you are. You've got to accept that you can't do it on your own and the anointing is a requirement. It's not an option. It's a requirement. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of popping in the midst of fire. Tired of popping in the midst of circumstance. I'm, I'm prepared to stand. The Bible tells us this, having done all to stand, stand therefore. What, what was he saying? He said that you, you ain't got to do one thing. You got to recognize that the battle is the Lord. You got to recognize that I, I have something greater on the other side of your circumstance. But it's not an emotional experience. It's a personal walk through season. And sometimes you got to go through the crushing to allow him to fill you with the right stuff. If you run away from the crushing, you'll never get the anointing to flow consistently in your life. So what are you saying, Darren? You, you want me to run to trouble? I'm saying when trouble comes, stand still. Don't open your mouth unless you're going to put the word on it. He said, I want you to go fill your horn with oil. Don't fill your horn with self or religion or denomination. I want you to fill your, your, your horn with oil. So write this down. Number two, when your horn is full, there's no room for anything else. It's very important. When your horn is full, it's simple, but it's important. When you stay full of the right thing, there's no room for the wrong thing to come in. Okay? Real simple. And I, like, I like this part. I wrote this down. The problem many times is most of us are, I told you, emotionally driven. After we feel rejected, okay? This was Samuel and God told him, stop, stop allowing your rejection. They ain't rejecting you. They rejected me. He says, so... Uh, after we start, after we feel rejected, we get offended and wounded by circumstances and by people. Yeah, that's why people leave the church because they felt rejected or they got wounded. And emotionally, they said, I ain't going back to that church. That pastor just said, he don't love me. Sister Jojo, she didn't wear the blue dress on the blue day. And I just, hang on. We get offended over the stupidest stuff. And we're filling ourselves with stuff that we don't need to be filled with. Instead of the anointing, somebody say anointing, feel me. This causes us to, lose, to focus on what we, we want and how we feel and not on what God has created us to become. 1 John 3 and 2 says it like this in the Passion Version. I love it. It says, Beloved, we are God's children right now. Not tomorrow. Right now, we are God's children. However, it is not yet apparent what we will become. In other words, there's, gonna, there's a better you inside of you. You ought to look at your neighbor and say, don't give up on me yet. God's still working on me. It hasn't yet appeared what we shall become. But we do know, watch this, that when it is finally 
made visible, watch this, we will be just like him. You ain't going to see me, you're going to see him. When people stop giving you credit and start saying, man, there's something about you. Yeah, it's, a, it's who's in me. It, when people start giving him credit rather than you credit, you know you're doing the right thing. So you got to stay filled with a fresh anointing on a consistent basis. All right. Scripture says this. Psalms 148, 14 says this. And he has exalted the horn of his people. The praise of all his saints. All the children of Israel. A people near to him. Praise the Lord. See, it, all throughout scripture, if you look at it, you're going to see, look it up. The word horn represents power. Okay? If you look at the, in the Old Testament, there's a type and a shadow. There's horns on the altar. All four corners. As if to say there's power in prayer. There's still power in your prayer. Okay? But the horn, many times priests and prophets, they would carry carry the horn around and inside that horn they would carry the the anointing the oil and the oil always represented power it represents authority okay listen you're the container you're the horn you got to see yourself when you're filled with the right thing you've got all the power you need you got all the power you need to lay hands on your children you don't need a preacher to come lay on no no you start speaking life over those kids right now you you can lay hands on your husband on your daughter on your aunt your uncle you have the power inside of you okay this isn't a feel-good message this is a recognize that it's about God's kingdom it's not about what you want and when the quicker we realize that we are trying, we want his kingdom to come and his will to be done on this earth. But he can't fulfill his will on earth until we get ourselves recognizing it's not about us. Okay. And we, th we a lot of times we'll preach it and teach it. It's about on this earth, this round earth. It's I, I think it's actually about you're the earth. I'm the earth. He's trying to get his will, his purpose to be fulfilled on this earth. What are you made of? Come on. You dirt. You the earth. He's trying to get his, his kingdom to be fulfilled in. But you, you, we must stay submitted to his will. His purpose. Not ours. Well, if I just get that, that other job. If I can just get a better looking husband. If I get. No. You're going to have more trouble. <laughs> All right, I'm done. I got to hurry. But the anointing which you have received from him, watch this, I'm going to prove it to you. 1 John chapter 2, verse 27. 1 John chapter 2, verse 27. But the anointing which you have received from him, capital H, abides in you. Watch this. And you do not need anyone to teach you. At some point, he's saying, you got to get it for yourself. But as... The same anointing that teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie. And just as it has taught you, you will abide in, capital H, Him. Okay? When, you, when, you, when you're being led by the Spirit and you're allowing the anointing to flow in your life on a consistent basis, everywhere you go, somebody say, well, I don't have a microphone. Anointing don't determine a microphone. Anointing doesn't determine... I th we got to get this. I'm just as anointed. I'll tell you what happened to me. Brooke and I started buying these Airbnbs and come stay with us kind of thing. And you ever come to Cincinnati, come stay with us. $150, we'll let you stay every night. Come on. <laughs> stay, teasing. But, but we started buying these properties and and I take this 110-year-old duplex, and uh, we redid it top to bottom. And something happened in the construction that I didn't notice uh, until I had my first clients stay one night. And basically, the basement people who, did, who redid my basement walls, they have basements up there in Cincinnati. Y'all don't know about that. 
But th when, they, when they dug around the perimeter of the basement, they hit my main toilet septic line, okay? That's a problem, especially when you fill it up with rock and concrete. And I hadn't had nobody stay there, and the flushing that we had been doing hadn't showed any, I mean, I tested it all, but nothing showed up. I mean, no, sometimes it don't show up. There's things in our life that won't show up for a little bit. But when they stayed all night, I came the next morning. They were on this side of the duplex. I was on this side of the duplex still doing some work on the other property uh, connected. And uh, it had, when I went down into the basement, guys, there was a mess everywhere. It came out everything. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about mess. Real mess. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? All right. And I had to clean it up. And I'm feeling angry and I'm upset and I'm bothered. I shouldn't be doing this. I need to be doing something else. This ain't what I had planned for today. And at this time, I didn't know what had happened. I just thought we just had a backup. And so I had people coming to help me. But I'm cleaning up the, the mess. Real mess, guys. I'm I need y'all to feel sorry for me. I mean, these were turds. I'm just telling you. It was a mess. Chris, help me out. You know what I'm talking about. I mean, this thing was toilet paper. In there. I mean, it's messy. It's one thing if it's yours, but somebody else's, that's a problem. I was having a problem. This is not three's company. I'm not supposed to be Jack Ripper. Come on. I, I am supposed to be owning this thing and making money, and I'm cleaning up mess. Here's my point. Holy Spirit, talk to me. Right there. I was angry. I was upset. This is what the Lord said to me. He said, Darren, you're just as anointed pre picking up this mess as you are standing on the pulpit, pulpit preaching with a microphone. Uh, if I'm lying, I'm dying. That's what he told me. And you thought it was the smell that was making me cry, but it's really the Holy Spirit. Because he knows how to teach you. Even when you're not doing what you think you, this ain't the way I, I saw this. This ain't what I expected to happen. What about you? What, did your life look exactly the way you thought it was going to look? And it's in those moments you have, uh, uh, you, you have to make a decision. Are you going to heed the voice of the Holy Spirit? Are you going to seek the anointing to, feed, to, to, to find, okay, what's God trying to teach me in this circumstance? Or are you going to get mad and blow up and run off and say, I ain't, I ain't listening to God. I ain't, I, I ain't praying. I ain't talking. I, I ain't serving. I ain't. Where's that going to get you? It's going to get you more trouble. It's going to get you more problems. So I've found in my life, take it for, uh, from me, you don't have to go down the long road. Just pick up the mess. Just serve, just love, just let him fill him, let him fill you the way you need to be filled. Let him break you the way that you need to be broken. My last thought, recognize when he told Samuel, go fill your oil, go fill your horn with oil. And then I want you to go find that boy because I've already found me another king. You know the story, he found David, right? He said, for I have provided for myself. Yeah. I have provided. Religion didn't provide for it. People didn't provide for it. I have provided for myself. God's going to provide. He's already provided everything that you need in your life, in your home, in your family. God's provided. He's provided for this building. He's provided for his church. He's I know the gates of hell are coming against each and every one of us at different times, but the Bible says those gates of hell will not prevail against the church of the living God. I'm not talking about hoopla. I'm talking about a church that God sent his son to die for so that we could be without spot and without wrinkle. We're still the church. He's provided for. He's already provided everything that you need. Don't you dare walk off these doors thinking you're defeated, thinking that there's no nothing. God don't have anything for you. No, no, no. God's already provided himself for you. Come on, give him praise. Give him glory in this house. If you need it for your notes, write it down. God's already provided 
everything you need, listen, in him. Everything you need in him. And this morning, I just want to leave you with this question. What if David, excuse me, what if Samuel wouldn't have went and had a, got anointing one more time? What if Samuel would have said, nope, Saul was it. And God, this is the third time I've been rejected. I'm done. I'm not going down to that. I'm not going down to that church house. And I'm not going, wherever he had to go get filled up. God told him to go down and get filled it up. Wherever he went and got the oil, I, I don't know where he got it. For some of you, maybe it's this church building. Maybe you need a fresh touch from the Holy Spirit in your life today. But what if Samuel wouldn't have went and been anointed and got a fresh anointing in his horn one more time? I'll tell you what would have happened. David might not have ever been anointed king. Fast forward a few generations, a little girl named Mary would have probably never been anointed to carry the anointed one as a virgin. And it could have been that the anointed one, Jesus, would have never came for 33 and a half years, been crucified and buried, conquered death, hell, and the grave. Had Samuel not been anointed one more time? I, 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 I'm, this is my message. I'm preaching through. I want to, I'm just asking you, can you just go there with your mind? What if God's calling you to be anointed one more time? Not anointed with a cross on your head, preacher touching you. You surrendering and saying, not my will, but your will be done. I believe there's a David anointing. There's a David generation. <laughs> See, David's the difference between David and everybody else was he had a heart after God. <laughs> His heart, he wasn't perfect. He didn't have it all together. But he had a repentant heart. And I'm not standing up here. I'm the least of, you, of, of every one of you. I made more many mistakes as every one of you in this house. But if repentance keeps me in his presence, I'm going to stay there. Humility will take you further than you've ever gone. And it'll keep you there. Bow your heads with me tonight, today. Holy Spirit, would you speak to these? Many are hurting. Many are in wondering what's the next step for them. What's their purpose? How do they carry an anointing effectively? Holy Spirit, we're giving you permission to fill our horns again. <laughs> You're in this place and you say, Pastor, Pastor, Pastor Darren, you know what? I've been carrying a lot of mess. I've been filling myself with a lot of things, but probably not what I need to be filled with. At seasons and times, I've filled myself up with the wrong thing. It's okay to say that, okay? John three seventeen says this, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. It's very important you realize that. We're not here. Nobody's here to condemn you. The Holy Spirit will change you. He will heal you. And he will transform you. If you let him feel him, feel you. If you don't know Jesus, everybody, look at me right now. This is the most important. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you've never confessed 
your sins and just said, Jesus, forgive me. I'm a sinner. You can't go to heaven. Romans 10 to 9. I had a young man in my truck the other day, 22 years old. And I wouldn't let him leave until he said, he said, man, do you know Jason? I don't know. I said, all right, we're going to get it right. Was I at a church? No. Was I in a building? No. But I had to let my anointing flow out so he could be filled with the same anointing. Now he's on his way to heaven. His name's been written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. I'm asking you, do you know Jesus as your personal Savior? If you don't, lift your hand up real high and don't be ashamed about it. Anybody in this room don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Anybody in here who needs to repent of some things that maybe you filled yourself up with the wrong thing? Thank you. There's an honest, there's an honest, there's an honest. Come on. I've got both hands up. I'm, I'm, I'm sure i got something in me. Now let's stand to our feet. We're going to loudly and we're going to proudly pray together. Is that okay? Come on. Just lift your hands as an act of surrender. This is not a ritual. You just surrender to the Say, Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. I believe you died on the cross. And I believe you rose again. From this day forward, I choose to live for you. Fill me with a fresh anointing. In Jesus' name. You thought I was worth saving. Come on, let's just worship in this house. So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. Yeah, Lord. worship in this house. Lord, you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. Yes, you did. Yeah, yeah. So you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for. Oh, yeah. So you sacrificed your life so I could be clean. So I could be whole. So I could tell Father, right now we speak life over these. I thank you, Lord, that you heal from top of heads to the sole of the feet. Lord, that you would give peace in the midst of circumstance and situation. Satan, the blood of Jesus against you. You are defeated. You can't have God's children, his daughters. We thank you, Lord, for a fresh anointing, a fresh oil to flow in the horns of your people. God, I thank you right now that marriages are being restored. I thank you, God, that relationships are being healed. You know what? Mm. If you're 25 years or younger, I want you to step up here. Come on. Move quick. Move quick. Move quick. Because there's a David anointing. Just stand with, with your hands up. You ain't got to look at me. You just stand here. And your act of surrenderance. Come on, because this next generation needs you. God needs you. He needs you. He needs you as leaders. He needs you as uh, businessmen, sons and daughters. See, you, you don't have to be used just in a church building. That's not what it's about. The kingdom will advance when we start taking territory north, south, east, and west. You can be in the schoolhouse. You can be in the political realm. Come on, we need a president that will step up and lead God and direct. We need, we need vice presidents. We, there's a lot. There's a, if God's going to extend the days, we got to get involved so his kingdom can advance. Somebody say amen. So, Lord, right now we speak to these young people. We, we say, Holy Spirit, fall afresh on these young people. Come on, come on, young people. Just say, Holy Spirit, feel me. 
I receive a fresh anointing, a fresh anointing. I want to be an example. I want to be a leader. Take my brokenness and heal me. Come on, just give him that brokenness. Give him that rejection. You just talk to him the way that you want to. He loves you. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you got a plan and a purpose, that the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. These young people, they're here today. They don't have to be. They've chosen to be. So I thank you right now, God, that you got a plan and a purpose for their life. Your plan is to prosper them, not to harm them, to give them an expected end. And I speak blessing over them. I declare it and I decree it into their future. Today's the day of salvation. No longer will they walk in condemnation or fear or doubt or unbelief. But God, they're going to walk as kingdom kids. They're going to walk as sons and daughters with their head high. Greater is he that's in them. The anointed one lives inside of them. And they're going to change a city. It's going to start in the home. They're going to lead their brothers, their sisters, their cousins. Their they're going to lead by example through humility, through humility. Fresh anointing, God. Ain't going to be no killings. Ain't going to be no stabbings. Ain't going to be no gangs. It ain't going to be like that. No, We're going to serve the King of Kings and they're going to serve the Lord of Lords. On the college campuses, on the high school campuses, middle school, everywhere they go, the light of Jesus, the anointed, is going to shine. And they're going to have influence in Jesus' name. If you believe in this next generation, come on, give God praise for them right now. Hallelujah. Amen.